Hi, welcome to Gaby's Knit Goodies out and about knitting vlog. And I am here to talk about all of my knitting fun that I've been doing lately. Um, I have a husband and three kids that I homeschool. And I have a yarn knitting obsession. And in order to fuel my knitting obsession, I hand dye yarn. And I sell it on Etsy. Gaby's Knit Goodies on most social media like on YouTube and Instagram. And... Um, on Etsy and then my yarn actually has its own Instagram handle GKG yarn so that I can just put all of my yarn glamour shots out there if anyone is interested in seeing it um, and, and then I put more of my hand knit items that I just just my social stuff <laughs> on Gabe Snake goodies on Instagram okay so let's get right down to why we're all here at least why I'm here is to talk about my knitting except for it's slightly tangled up I only have a couple of project with projects with me and I haven't um, finished anything lately I I have a lot of whips right now but such is life the the one good thing about having a lot of whips is that eventually you'll have a lot of finished objects right eventually if you whenever you actually get around to finishing something they'll all get finished kind of at once at least that's what I'm hoping for. Right now I'm actually sitting in the parking lot of where my daughter takes horseback riding lessons. Um, and she just started back up for her spring session. She only does like a couple of six week sessions throughout the year. She doesn't compete or anything. She just really likes animals and um, just really enjoys it. So I try to support her as best I can in that. So first whip I will talk about that I have with me is the Easy V sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Networks and I have made progress since last time. Ta-da! See if I can back it up. Maybe? <laughs> okay, as you can tell, I've split from my sleeves. Isn't that so exciting? And the color work went really well. I love Love, love, love how it turned out. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can get this all in the shot, and I'm not doing a good job with it at all. Okay, so it's my own hand-dyed yarn in a worsted weight merino, superwash merino. Um, I, like I said last time, I did not do um, the, like, four different 50 gram balls of the dyed in the wool spin cycle yarns for the yoke. I just did two 100 gram ones, which I have a good amount left of each. Let's see if I have them with me. I do not have them with me. Um, but yeah, I just did two colors instead of the four different colors, and I am happy with the way it turned out. I have a one color that has some blues in there and some of the um, salmon-y color in it and then this one is very similar to the body yarn except instead of it being just like a nice tonal it's more of um it's still a tonal but it's very like variegated I actually have like speckles and like um, a very dark almost brownish um, salmon color. So it does give a variety, but it's still very much um, is in the same color as the main body. I think it's really pretty and I'm very excited about this big neckline. And I think it'll actually be a little bigger than what it looks now. I am knitting a size 3 because I wanted to make it sure it's plenty big. I did not want a small garment. Yeah. I wanted it slouchy and big. I wanted it very similar in fit to her sample. And I think that this will give me that. So, I love it. And this one with the blue also has like some purples in there. And a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green 
I really like that color. I don't know if you can hear that. There's a branch scratching the back of my car. That sounds like a whimpering dog. Hopefully you can't really hear that. All right, so I am on my second skein of the main colorway, that salmon-y color. I don't currently have this in my shop. If someone requested it, I will definitely dye it up for anyone who wants it. But currently I don't have um, this in the shop. I did dye a fingering weight yarn similar to this blue one here just because I liked it so much. Okay, my other object I have with me today, this is going to be a fairly short podcast because I left a number of my finished objects at home. I might talk about them and just put a picture up. Oh no. Might be in trouble. So I finished a sock, except for the Kitchener of the Toe, in which I just pulled the needle out, and so I have live stitches. So I'm going to try to get these back in here. So I finished this sock, and I was out. I was really excited to finish it, but I wasn't in a position to be able to focus on doing the Kitchener. So I just left them on the longer needles because I use nine inch circulars. These are Chow, Chow Goo nine inch circulars for the majority of it, but for um, the toe, because they get such a small circumference here, I use my longer, um, longer corded needles here. And these are Haya Haya Sharps, which I like very much in a, interchangeable set. So anyways, I had the ability to forego kitchenering it or postpone it really, procrastinate, and cast on my second sock. So I've already cast on my second one with my little child goo needles. These are size US 2s that I'm working with. Um, I was looking for the millimeters, but I forget what... Oh, wait. 2.75 millimeters and for this yarn this is merino cashmere nylon in the colorway ocean cliffs the sun has really changed here now it's kind of in my way um, ocean cliffs colorway and the set comes with the brown So it is like just over 400 yards per 100 grams, this one is. Um, so it's a little bit plumper than my other fingering weight yarn that I have in the shop. And so I decided to do 60 stitches instead of 64. And I just did a top down 2x2 two two rib. And then I just did plain stockinette stitch. And the way the yarn is, it's um, it looks like it's self-striping, but it's actually spiraling. You can kind of see here at the very top that it's a spiral. And then I did a heel flap and gusset with my 20 gram mini in the brown there. And you can see that because the stitch count changes around while you're doing your gusset, that that little striping ends up um, pooling right around that area. And I did um, my decreases every other row here. So it's, some people like to do every row. I find that's a little too fast for my decreases. So I do every other. And then I decided sometimes with hand knit socks like my sockle shift a little bit too easy on my foot and so I decided to do the bottom here of the um, foot part in the same stitch I forget what this stitch is that I do on the heel flap it's the slip one knit one um, across and then the second row you just knit all the way and then it slip one knit one again 
so it creates um, it has a little less give and I did not do it on the top so this is an experiment I've never done one quite like this before so I will once I start wearing it I will let you know how it works out for me I think it'll be nice to have that little extra snugness around my foot but one thing I like is you can see it does its little stripey thing on the top here but on the bottom where I did that patterning it it creates kind of an interesting um, pattern I like it so very excited about these they're very squishy and nice so second sock I went ahead and cast on not gonna have second sock syndrome might have Kitchener syndrome, but not second sock syndrome. Alrighty. And this lives in my purse. I have actually been knitting them rather slowly because it lives in my purse. Like, I don't do it at home at all. I just do it when I'm out. I guess the other thing I should talk about is what I am wearing. This is... Um, I believe it's called a daffodil hat. It is by Kelborn Woolens. Year of Bulky Hat. So you can get the pattern for free on Ravelry. I don't know if you can get it free anywhere else. I did a folded brim. I don't remember if the pattern called for that or not. And then it has these cute little, um, let's see how bad my hair is. It has these cute little, I don't know what you call them, you kind of pick up stitches every now and again, multiple times in like a few rows below in one spot. And so it creates a little like flower type motif. I thought it was really cute. I am holding my one strand of Erin weight with a strand of mohair for the main body of it and then just on the brim I did not do the mohair because I was afraid that the mohair right on my forehead might um, might have just a slight like itchiness feeling I don't know that it would like in general I feel like it's quite soft my forehead is extremely sensitive so I decided just to do the Aaron weight rose merino and then here for the main body, I really like the look of that, um, of the white mohair held with the, with the rosé colorway. I think it's really pretty. And it, you can see it's nice and fuzzy, and I figured it would keep me extra warm. Um, I like the hat. I don't know if you could tell, but it's, it's not as roomy as I would like. And I think that the reason for that. Is I messed up <laughs> right after the brim you get into your little flower section and as you can tell I have like twice as many flowers in this first row as in the next row and when you do these little flowers it kind of tugs on the row a bit so it makes it your stitches squish up a bit so it makes it just a little bit tighter and because I doubled it here this row is a little too tight um, and so it stretches a bit when I wear it and I don't like that look as much so I'm kind of sad about that because I love the hat and I still wear it but I feel like it doesn't look as good as it could look because these stitches here are just stretched more than they ought to be because I did double as many flowers. And I didn't realize it till I was like, you know, up here and I didn't want to rip it out. That's just simple decreases at the top here. Yeah. Overall, I really like it though. I like the yarn. I made it out of, I think that's fun. I also messed up a little bit, I think, when I did my double brim, tucking it up. I made it slightly crooked. Don't really care about that though. 
But here we go. I like it. All right, I don't have any other knitting with me, but I'll put a few pictures up here. One of my camisole number five. Yay, it is very close to being done. I didn't make a mistake in that one though. So I don't I don't know why I read the pattern this way, but I never pin it, printed it out. I have it on my phone. I don't really like having my pattern on my phone, but it is convenient in terms of like always having it with you. And I was glancing at how long the garment was supposed to be, and I got like centimeters mixed up with inches. And so I was like, oh, I'm past when I'm supposed to bind off. So I bound off. And then I tried it on. I was like, this is a little bit short. Maybe it'll like block longer. A little shorter than I expected. And then I re-looked at the pattern. And I was like, oh. You know, like 14 inches is very different from like 14 centimeters. <laughs> I think I was supposed to go to like 11 inches under the arm and I um, I went to like I don't know 15 centimeters instead I was all off anyways I haven't decided if I'm gonna leave it that length or not there's pros and cons to it one benefit of leaving it shorter is that I can wear it with like my high-waisted jeans and I wouldn't have to like tuck it in but if I lifted up my arms, my skin might show, and I don't really want any belly skin to show. So I don't know if that's going to work out. But one of the main reasons I wanted to knit it was for a layering piece. And in terms of layering it, having it short enough to where I don't have to tuck it in would actually be very beneficial. Because then I would have it as that base layer. You could possibly see, like, you know, the top of it but it wouldn't add the bulk of tucking it in if I was like tucking in the other you know, shirt or whatever I was wearing over it. So I don't know. I am on the double knitted um, like sleeve area now and actually shockingly really enjoying that. The body of it I did not enjoy. That two by two rib on size three needles with fingering weight yarn in a garment size was not fun. I think that's part of the reason why I was so quick to bind off. But um, I am shocked at myself that I've actually really enjoyed doing that double knitting. And I like, it just looks very nice. And um, it actually is going by rather quickly. So that's really good. I'm on, I've gone through one and then like two thirds of the other one. I would just have the neck to do, which is smaller than the armhole. So I'm close to being done. And I also am almost out of my first skein of yarn. So I do have another one. I dyed at the same time. So it should be the same. Um, should look the same. You shouldn't see any difference in the dye job. So that's good. So I will start that. Yeah. It's exciting. Almost done with that. And it's almost springtime. So I think it will be a good timing to be finished with it and actually be able to wear it a good bit. All right, the other projects I am working on, I have not progressed with my cabled sweater number 21, or 20, the cabled one by My Favorite Things Knitwear. The camisole was by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Both of them and the EZV are all in the GKG Favorite Things Cal. If you want to join me, I have a participant already who's doing the cabled sweater, and I would love some more. It, when I get a few more participants, um, I'll announce a giveaway, so that'll be fun. Um, what is my other project? I haven't done anything on my habitation throw, and that might be all of my whips. Shockingly, I need to cast on a hat for my husband out of the yarn that I over dyed for him. But that might wait. I might wait for that one till closer to the fall. Because 
I don't know. I'm just not interested in casting on a hat right now. But we'll see. It would be a quick knit. Which is good. I really want this Easy V to be done. Because I think it would be a really good, like, cool nights. Like, especially, like, cool windy beach nights. Like, sweater to put on with, like, shorts in the evening. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I don't know, the colors and slouchy and the really big neck, I can just totally see having that cozy thing on, but not having it be overwhelmingly, smotheringly warm. It would just give a nice little warm hug on the cool nights. I'm already dreaming of going to the beach. And we never even had a good snow this year, so that's okay. We'll live. My sister up in Alaska had lots of snow for the both of us. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to watch my daughter just walk around on her horse for a little bit in the rink and um, do a little more knitting. I hope you guys are getting some sunshine and getting to knit as well. Bye.